I do want to praise the Lord and thank Him and give Him glory. I want to talk about something today to be very important. I want to talk about the church of today. Turn with me please to Acts chapter 2, verses 1 through 3. Acts chapter 2, verses 1 through 3. Well, let's go to the full. The Word of God says, And when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all with one accord in one place. And suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind, and it filled all the house where they were sitting. And there appeared unto them a club and tongues like as a fire, and it sat upon each of them. Verse 4, and they were all filled with the Holy Ghost and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. The reason why I'm sharing verse 4 is because I have a testimony I want to share. And by the way, other tongues were uh, uh, the tongues that people could understand, their language. And that's very important to understand that. Two years ago, I was supposed to be going to Honduras again this January, first week of January. But about two years ago, <clears throat> we was in Honduras, and just me and a brother, and we, over, we finished with our conference, and there was a, <clears throat> there was a, the, it rained for four days and four nights straight, and you could, the side of the mountain, you could just hear, where they, they cut timber, you could just hear the roar of, of, of the soil just falling, just rolling down. And we wanted to go see the river right there. And we did, me and my brother did, and coming back, and just being him, he didn't speak Spanish, and neither did I, do I, or did I? But anyway, we was coming back into the compound, and the guy said, there's two young girls, one was 13 and 14, and, and they, needed, they needed to talk to us. Well, here we are. We got this guy and his wife, they don't speak English, we got these two young girls, they didn't speak English as well. But the Lord put into my heart, they needed salvation. They was looking, for salvation. So I said, Lord, I can't speak a word of Spanish. Uh, my brother with me can't speak a word of Spanish. And these two young girls can't speak a word of Spanish as well. Mm -hmm. But I claim a miracle to you, to, for you to do today, right now, what you did in Acts. Mm -hmm. And I started talking to these two young girls and I led them in a sinner's prayer. Mm -hmm. And uh, let, me, let me finish now. And I led him in a son's prayer, but I wanted to make sure about two or three hours later, a guy that's going to be with us again on this mission trip can speak Spanish. And I said, brother, would you please go talk to these two young girls and make sure they know what we did, what we said, and what they said. And he went and he came back and he said, they understood everything that you said. Amen. Amen. Now, that's a miracle. It's time that we start claiming the promises of God. I'll put it to you like this. It's time for us to get off our hot horse and get on our knees and start praying to God, the God of all miracles. Amen. 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 And I wanted to share that. But I want to talk about the church of today. And we want to go into God's Word and see what's, what happened on the day of Pentecost and apply it not only to our lives, but the life of this church as well. What do we see in the upper room? Well, there's three things that I think we see. First, we see that they were in one place. Uh, on the time of worship, they were in one place. They didn't have a group over there, over there, over there, and over there. They were gathered together in one place. Amen. Hey, hallelujah. Second, we see God got their attention. There was a need there. There was a serious need there. Things were going on that Jesus taught them, but they never experienced before. There was a need. God got their attention. Third, we see the visual manifestation of God. The Holy Spirit descending as cloven tongues of fire. Amen? So we see three things there. But before, I want to get into what I see here. First, we see unity. It's very important to be in unity. Acts chapter 2 verse 1 says, And when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all with one accord in one place. 
The church needs unity. You need unity. The family needs unity. We need unity. Can I have an amen? amen? How can you have peace when there's conflict? How can you have understanding when there's always misunderstanding? How can you have oneness if there's always a judge, judgmental spirit? That's an impossibility. You cannot, without unity, you cannot have certain things that the Word of God says that we can have. Amen. And I want you to understand that. We need to come together in unity, in one accord. Unity is harmony. The condition of being consistent of one. When they were gathered together, they all had a common need. And that need was to understand what just took place. And to understand what is taking place. And what is going to take place. Don't you think we need that in our lives right now? What is taking place, what has taken place, and what will be taking place. How can we go through that if we don't have an understanding? If we don't have an understanding, Satan's going to come in and throw in conflict and doubt and mistrust and a whole lot of other stuff to cause confusion and to cause disharmony, if I might say it that way. When the church is in unity, then the church is in one accord. An accord is to agree, to exist or go together without conflict. But let me go ahead and bring this even further. When I say the church is in one accord, it doesn't mean everybody thinks the same way. Because right now, and I've said this many times, right now, each one of us, I'm thinking right now as I'm preaching. A lot of times i got about three thoughts going in my mind at one time, sometimes four. But right now, each one of y'all are thinking about something right now. I don't know what it is, but you're thinking about something. It might be for lunch. It might be for this guy to hurry up so I can go to McDonald's or I can go to Waffle House or I can go to any kind of house or I can go somewhere where somebody else has cooked it so I can sit down and eat it. I don't know what it is. Or you might be thinking about Monday. You might have a lot of things on your mind for Monday. You might have family problems. There's a lot of things that's going on right now. So when the Bible says one accord, and I, when I say this church needs to come together in one accord, it doesn't mean that we agree together on everything, but we come here for one one accord, and that's to worship Jesus Christ and to lift up the name of the Son of God. Amen. And to bring people into the family. Hallelujah. When I say the family, I mean into the kingdom of God because hell is real. We need to come to church, and we'll get on to it in a little bit. We need to come to church together for one accord, and that is to lift up the name of Jesus and worship and praise and reason His word and be in the mouthpiece for our Lord. Somebody said that we are the feet and the mouth of the Holy Spirit. I have to agree with that. Don't you think? Amen. Don't you think yes. that people need to see something in us that they don't see in the world? Yes. If the world is always fighting and the world wants to take everything you've got, then who wants to be part of that? Who wants to be part of a church who's always arguing and fighting and finding and fault and, 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 and wanting their own way instead of wanting God's way? How do you know what God's way is? Get on your knees and pray and ask God. But, but don't bring conflict in. Don't say, i got to have my way or y'all go somewhere else. Amen. Now, I won't deviate from God's Word. Now, that's one thing we won't do. Amen. Amen. We're not going to deviate from God's Word. We're not going to play around in any kind of play around at all. There's some things I don't talk about, some things I will not talk about, and that's the same thing to do with, with sex. That's some things we do not do. we got to be holy. Our minds got to be pure. Our minds got to be clean. How can we hear from God if we got it all cluttered? Amen. You see where I'm coming from? And God is sharing this. Hallelujah. Yes. I don't, don't, don't you want to see your families put back together? Yes, I mean, yes. don't you want to see miracles take place in your life? How can miracles take place in your life if you're always in conflict? Amen. We need to turn it loose. How do you turn it loose? I tell you what, come up here and lay hands on you and we'll turn it loose. But don't pick it up when you get back outside. Amen. I remember a guy down south and <coughs> I got to have some water. And he's a pretty good old boy, I got to thank you. He's a pretty good old boy. Well, he's pretty old right now, too. But we've been up here 14 years. That's a long time. If I was in the army, I'd be almost ready to retire. But they would kick me out. 
They wouldn't. But anyway, he came up and he wanted to be delivered from nicotine. Said, okay, brother, I'll tell you what, we're going to lay hands on you. You're going to be set free. Said, okay, brother. He came up, boom, laid hands on him. Oh, he was excited. He went outside and picked up a cigarette. <laughs> he come back again the next Sunday. He said, brother, I failed. I said, I can smell it on you. I said, you want to do it again? He said, I want to do it again. I said, I'm going to take some. This time I'm going to pray, but i got to get your permission before I do it. I said, now look, don't give me your permission because you're not making it to me, you're making it to God. You pick up another cigarette, you're going to start coughing and throwing up and puking and everything else. I said, are you ready for that? He said, yes. Lay hands on me. It's no sense. Thank you, Jesus. Be serious when you ask things from God. Yes, now, I want to go one more miracle with that family. I never remember this. His wife wanted to have a little girl. She wanted a little girl man. Had a beautiful little boy. He's married now. He might have one or two kids himself now. And she came up. She said, pray for him. Having surgery tomorrow. What kind of surgery? She says, hysterectomy. I said, you want a little girl, don't you? She says, yeah. I said, you know, if you have a hysterectomy, you know, that's old. She said, yeah. I said, why don't we pray for your healing now? Instead of your surgery. Remember I asked you? We prayed, laid hands on her and prayed for her. Something happened that Monday. They postponed the surgery. <laughs> and then whatever else, they found out she didn't need surgery. Guess what she's got right now? <laughs> that little girl. That little girl, I guess she's 16, 17, 18 now. <laughs> when we make a commitment to God, if we hold true to that commitment, you got blessings on the way. Amen. Amen. And that's just only one of many testimonies we can tell you about. Lord. But let's go on. How many here want to see miracles in your life? Yes. Start making commitments to God and don't break them. Amen. And don't make a commitment you can't keep. Yes. I, I urge you, don't do that. I tell people when they say, Brother Franklin, will you marry me? No, but I'll do the ceremony. <laughs> But uh, how much you charge? I said, I don't charge nothing. My services, I don't charge for services that God has anointed me to do. Amen. 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 Uh, and so, but anyway, I said, you know what? Well, I, I, I'm gonna make, I'm gonna make some vows. I mean, I'm gonna, I said, first of all, you need to know something right now before we get started. You're not making vows for one another. Each one of y'all might be here, but you're making a vow to God. And when you make a vow to God, God takes it very seriously and don't break it. Yeah. Now, there's some situations. I'm not getting into all that. Amen? I used to be this, but I'm not getting into all that. But we've got to weigh each individual circumstance on its own merit. Can I have an amen? amen. And don't bring no judgmental spirit in here neither, because we don't want that neither. Can I have an amen? Amen. 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 You, you see what I'm talking about? About one accord and unity now? I pray you do. This is very important. Very important for this church, and it's very important for you. Because I believe we're going to have the latter day rain. Don't you? Amen. Amen. I can to see the cloud now. Amen. I see it coming. Amen. I like it. Amen. Amen. People need to set aside personal feelings and commit themselves to a task. We see here they were of one mind. None were uninterested. None was not unconcerned, and none of them were lukewarm. There's something that takes place when a trial comes across your path. When a situation in your life calls for your knees to be on the ground, when your tongue needs to be praised in the Lord and asking the Lord for help, something takes place. Amen? But they were all in earnest and united in prayer. But let's talk about, let's go to verse 14. Let's talk about that for a second. These all continued with one accord in prayer and supplication with the women and Mary, the mother of Jesus, and with his brethren. We need to be in prayer. We started something here about a year ago, I believe it is, or whatever. We started praying by name almost every Sunday night service and Wednesday night service. Sometimes the Lord might bring us one way or the other. But we're praying in earnest for people, for people's needs. 
We need to be a praying church. Can I have an amen? amen? And when you walk out of here, you need to be praying for your family, for, for each other. Pray for yourself too. Pray for others as well. We never know what the next moment will bring. Tuesday night, me and Brother Mickey, we go to a prison. We, we have a prison ministry, and God is really blessing it. If you want a blessing, so into this ministry, and you will be blessed. But me and Mickey is going... And God has blessed me with Mickey. And, and we're going to I pray that God has blessed Mickey with me as well. Amen. And I'm there with Diane and Diane with Amen. Just a bunch of blessings going on. But we're going out and we see an extreme amount of traffic on Cyprus right there. Mickey said, you know, there's something wrong. The interstate's got to be blocked off or something. Something's wrong. And sure enough, sure enough, that Tuesday evening there was an accident on I-20 going west. And a man was killed in a one-car accident. Maybe y'all read about it. I don't know. But what I'm saying is you don't know what the next moment's going to bring. Right. So I say this, let's get it straight. Amen? Amen. Amen. Let's get it straight. Let's get our mind straight. Let's get all this cluttered out. Let's get it out. Amen? Amen. Cut it out. Cluck. Cast it out. Man, look, I don't have a problem. I cast things in the dry places in a minute. You ask me to pray for you, be careful because we're doing some casting. Amen? And I believe it according to Scripture. We was at a meeting uh, uh, one night and, and the guy wanted me to pray. And I started praying and the, and the Lord just laid on my heart to start casting. And we cast. Well, I'll tell you what, we wasn't fishing neither, but we was casting. The dry places was getting full, let me tell you. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise God. But they were all in earnest and united in prayer and in faith. And they all included the women and children. Don't stop our children from worshiping of God the Lord. Amen. Don't stop them. Because what they know today is what they're going to be doing tomorrow. That's right. Amen. People wonder. You know, I've got a lot of wondering too. But don't stop the children from worshiping and praising the Lord. If we can get up there and dance a little bit, how come the kids can't do it? Amen. Amen. And you know what I mean? The definition of dance. You understand? You dance between you and the Spirit. And, 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 and what we're doing is, is to glorify the Lord. Amen. Yes. And, and, and it's a big amen. amen. And uh, and I love it. I love it, God. I'll be honest with you. Lord, Lord, that's warfare. Well, I'm just talking about we in spiritual warfare right now. Amen. How many of you know that we're in spiritual warfare? Amen. You might say, well, ain't nothing wrong with me. Well, baby, you just got a whole lot of uh, 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 something coming on you. <coughs> because we're in spiritual warfare. If you're a born-again believer, you're in spiritual warfare according to the Word of God. Amen. Hallelujah. But I know that I'm victorious through Jesus Christ. Amen. All right, let's get let's get let's get on now. We see that people need to come into a peaceful situation and setting. We need to come to church in a peaceful setting. As we come into church, we need to come in church ready to worship the Lord. Not have one group of people over here. Could be two or three finding fault with three or four people over here. Oh, you're just not doing the way you ought to be doing it. You know, we need to do this. We need to do that. Amen. Before long, you got one of the biggest confusions you ever wanted. Who wants to be part of that? Amen. I don't need to be part of that. I need to come into church in a peaceful situation where I can come in and worship the Lord. Amen. 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 How many years have you ever been in a church where they had clicks? Yeah. One click against the other click. Yeah. You don't play the piano good enough. I had one guy down south, we had about a 20 somewhat, 21 something praise team. And we, we, I don't care if you're in tune or not. What in the world do I care? God says make a joyful noise. He didn't say get a professional up. But anyway, this guy thought he must have been somebody. I don't know who he thought he was. But he called me up one day. He's come about three months, a month, two months. I didn't know this. He called me up. Brother, brother Brinkley. I said, yes, sir, my brother. What can I do for you? you got to get rid of all the praise team. I said, and just me. I said, why? Because they out of tune. They messing me up. He said, if I don't, if I don't, now I'm going to have to go somewhere else. I said, I'll see you down the road, my brother. <laughs> you know, who cares? I don't care. I want to see people enjoying themselves, <coughs> worshiping and praising God. I don't care if you enjoy it or not. Amen. Amen. What difference does it make to me? God says He enjoys a joyful noise. Let's make some noise. Amen. 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 Can y'all make some noise? Let's hear it. So, but anyway, people should not have to come to church where there's strife and conflict. 
Do not bring, come on now, do not bring the world into the church. Yes. Yeah. Keep the world where the world is. Keep it out of the church. Yes. Does that mean sinners are not supposed to come in? Yes, they are. But the leadership of the church does not have to bring the world in. We built a brand new church. It was not a big church. But we built a brand new church down south. A little bit bigger than this church. But we built it without a fundraiser. Without a cake sale. Without a, the biggest donation was given at one time was a hundred dollar bill. Period. And we built it. We paid cash for it. Because people come together and one accord for a common need. And they gave what they had. And God got the glory. Right now, before we do anything, come on, we got to have this bake sale, we got to have a garage sale. We don't need it, we don't want it. God is going to bless this church from the offering, and God's work is going to be done because the offering is going to be here because God says, bring it and you will obey it in turn. The church is going to be blessed, and in turn, you're going to be blessed. Just say, you wear it, you whatever it is, give what God says. I lived it. I lived it. Amen? Amen. Amen. How can battle be waged against the devil when there is constant conflict and strife in the body of believers? It can't be. No wonder so many born again believers are rendered helpless. Mm -hmm. We need the power of God. Amen. Who cares if somebody said something bad about you? The devil was already doing it. Who cares if somebody don't like you? I care, but yet I don't care. Don't think you're not going to have a conflict by being a born again believer walking in the light. You know what the light does to darkness, don't you? What does the light do to darkness? It what? It has to flee. It dispels the darkness, right? So figure it out like this. If there's a bunch of people in a dark room and you walk in, guess what? They're going to start finding fault with you. You holy roly. You buy a token book and say, where's the wheelbarrow? What do you mean? If you say I'm talking the Bible, I must have a wheelbarrow because by your way of thinking it must be big and I can't care. I'm, I'm not too big. You know what I mean? So where's my wheelbarrow? I don't have a wheelbarrow. Because y'all understand what I'm saying. I pray you. I know you. I know you do. We as a body of believers need to be and continue to be in one accord in prayer and supplication. Pray for your family. Yes. Pray for your children, your grandchildren, or your great grandchildren. Yes. Pray for your job. Yes. Pray. Amen. Yes. Ask God earnestly and humbly to bless somebody who's abusing you. Yes. Bless. Ask God to bless you. Yes. Yes. Amen. Yes. Now, whatever happens with them, that's not the point. The point of it, what happens to you? You're going to start feeling good about yourself. That joy is going to start coming. God will show us signs and wonders. Acts chapter 2, verse 19. And I'll be closing in another second too. And I will show wonders in heaven above and signs in the earth beneath. Blood and fire, vapor and smoke. But the point is, I will show wonders in heaven above and signs in the earth below. I don't come to church to see signs and wonders. But rather, I come to church to worship the one who brings us signs and wonders. Amen. 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 The time for the Father's house is now. That it's to come together with one accord in one place. Time of anointing. And ask the Holy Spirit to fill you. Ask the Holy Spirit to fill this sanctuary. And allow the Holy Spirit to lead you and to guide you. Allow the Holy Spirit to light your path. 
and the Holy Spirit will. Can I have an amen? amen. Praise God. God bless you.